Okay, so this is a, a loop station that I built using the Raspberry Pi 4. Let me just plug in the power supply here. Um, and this video is going to be a demo video where I basically show how to use it, what the buttons do, things like that. Um, and then there's another video which is a build video where I go over the actual build process, how to set it up and uh, that kind of stuff. So if you like what you see here, you can go over to that video, watch it and uh, you can uh, you can build your own. So right now the Raspberry Pi is booting up. When it completes that, it will go into a Python script which does the looping and to signal that it uh, that we are ready to start looping, it turns on all the lights like this. Now there are four tracks. On each track I have a record button, a play button and two LEDs, a green one to indicate when the track is playing and a red one to indicate when the track is uh, recording. Now when I start looping, I must start uh, first of all with the leftmost track, which is this one. This acts as a sort of master loop, as in that all the other tracks lengths will be quantized to some multiple, uh, an integral multiple of the length of the first track. That is to say that it will be quantized uh, to either as long as the first track or twice as long or thrice as long, so on. Um, but the first track itself uh, is, is, is um, free to be whatever length. So I can start, uh, start, start recording by pressing the record button, stop by pressing the record button and that's the length. So let me go ahead and loop something on the first track. Okay, so now we have this one track, uh, one loop, and um, now I can go ahead and press record on the same track. And what that would do is that uh, it would go into an overdub um, mode, and then I could overdub on top of the same track and add more layers that way. So when I press record, it's going to wait for the track to restart, and then it's going to. Uh, Turn on the red light to indicate that's recording and it's going to record an over, overdub. So now um, these two layers are, have become essentially one audio clip and they're going to act uh, as one, uh, one loop. So if I mute it, both of them go away. If I unmute it, both of them come back and so on. Uh, so now when I overdub, obviously the length of the overdub is going to be the same as the length of the loop underneath. However, if I go to a different track, then of course I can uh, record a loop of a different length. So let me uh, go ahead and do that on this one here. Um, I wonder, okay. And again, you'll see that uh, it'll wait to record until this first track, the master track, uh, comes back around to its beginning. Let me mute that as well. So um, the quantization of the length always rounds up, which is to say that if I were to start recording a loop on this one, and then I pressed stop recording after 2.5 loops of the master track, the length of this uh, second uh, one is going to be quantized to three times the um, the the first one okay so uh, whether it was 2.5 even you know 2.1 it's going to always round up uh, it's going to go to three now the this this leaves uh, a possible problem which is that if you want to play or uh, sing right to the end of the loop 
then it becomes um, difficult to you know press the button in time and so for this there is a setting in the setup process a parameter that you can set which um, allows you to specify a number of milliseconds that you are allowed to press the button late by and still have it uh, uh, quantized to the right length so essentially you say round up unless uh, you are within say 500 milliseconds um, of you know rounding down and then it'll round down <laughs> so um, yeah so that's that is uh, that is recording muting unmuting deleting um, overdubbing that's pretty much everything that uh, that this loop station does so that covers the functionality as, as far as the buttons and lights are concerned now let's talk about these inputs so there are two inputs here uh, labeled uh, HIZ and LOZ so that stands for high impedance and low impedance these are not actually high impedance and low impedance uh, inputs that's not what the labels mean in fact they're both uh, fairly high impedance inputs but um, they are designed for signals which come from uh, high impedance and low impedance sources so uh, this one I have a microphone plugged into a dynamic microphone and uh, into this I usually plug the output from my guitar's uh, multi-effect pedal and uh, so now what happens inside is that these two uh, these two signals are passively mixed and their levels are control controllable uh, via these two knobs on the side they are also I'm not sure if you can see this but they are also labeled uh, the same as the inputs and um, let me just reposition okay so they are also labeled the same and so you know which one controls which uh, and so now these these signals are mixed passively and uh, they are sent to this output so you'll notice that it has two outputs that that is not because it is in stereo it is in fact in mono but um, this this first output is just connected directly to the uh, passively mixed input which means that whatever you're playing or uh, singing or whatever beatboxing live is going to go through on this first uh, first output here and the mixed input also goes to the raspberry pi via a usb sound card and uh, the output from the raspberry pi goes to this second output here which means that in order to use this uh, you need to plug into something that has two inputs such as a mixer or uh, a, a PA system with with two inputs um, the reason I did not incorporate uh, circuitry to actually mix the two signals actively inside uh, is because I wanted to keep the build simple and I, I believe that it is fairly simple so uh, if, if you, if you want to build it there's uh, you don't need um, much expertise if I think it, it would help if you have some experience with uh, Linux in general and Raspberry Pi in particular but other than that the electronic side of things is uh, is is quite quite simple I wonder if that leaves anything else um, as, as I let me just reiterate what the two outputs are for so this output is for what you're doing live and then this output is for the actual loops uh yeah i think i think that's that's pretty much everything that i have to say about the functioning of this uh, of this of this looper uh, let let me know if you have any questions and um if again if you're interested uh go check out the build video all right cheers